Hey guys, so this isn't going to be one of my typical videos where I do a lot of edits and do jokes here and there, mostly dumb jokes, but I just want to talk about something that's been really pissing me off. So a couple of days ago, Urinating Tree got a copyright strike from Sportsnet, where they actually went out of their way to manually take down his recent video on the Ottawa Senators. Before I go on, the argument for and against fair use is a completely different topic, but basically it comes down to content creators not paying for the distribution rights, while Sportsnet as a company has many legal and financial expenses to cover. I'll leave a link down below on the legal definitions of fair use, but this isn't really what I'm pissed about. What's pissing me off is how short-sighted Sportsnet is being through their actions while also being totally oblivious to the fact that they're digging their own graves and taking us with them. For some reason, Sportsnet seems to view us as competition. I mean, obviously they want to maximize their viewership to increase their revenue, but their view on how to compete on YouTube is so embarrassing that it honestly makes Don Cherry look good. They're a bunch of jerks as far as I'm concerned. But the thing is, Sportsnet shouldn't view us as competition. The real competitors are the NBA, NFL, MLB, and other sports leagues around the world. What they don't realize is that hockey content creators like Urinating Tree, Riflix, Cole Adams, CJ Zazari, and other wonderful YouTubers on this platform is actually on Sportsnet's side. We're all here to talk about the game we love, and that allows the game to grow. More appeal and exposure to a younger audience is great for the game versus the older and traditional TV audience of today. And when we are successful, the hockey community grows. And when the hockey community grows, we are growing interest for hockey and creating a bigger pool of hockey fans for the future, which will increase traffic for all hockey channels. Are you following this LeafsNet? Because there's two things for you to consider, growth and retention. If Sportsnet continues this, then the casual, non-loyal audience will just replace us with basketball YouTubers like Mike Korzemba or Jimmy High Roller. Also, there's this guy named Omar and he basically founded a basketball highlights account on Instagram. And after getting a call from the Bleacher Report, which is a huge media giant, by the vice president of social media, and now he works for the company. And then you have the hockey side where a channel named Go Canucks Go, basically the same thing as Omar has done, was shut down by Sportsnet early March of this year. The funny thing is, his videos weren't even monetized. And in my opinion, this move by Sportsnet is just so disgusting. And it just tells me that Sportsnet didn't want him to steal viewers away from their own channel. He basically said that he talked to Sportsnet's upper management personnel through the phone. And all that ever happened was that the creator got a very angry and disrespectful five minute lecture on why he was wrong. So when Sportsnet shuts down hockey channels and takes down Tree's video, like what are they trying to accomplish? They're hurting everyone and including themselves. They are killing the exposure of hockey to new fans and actually helping other sports leagues grow. I'm not here to say that we're entitled to all the ad revenue, but it's just so baffling to me to see how far behind this situation is compared to the NBA. Because as far as I know, the NBA works with a multi-channel network which provides its content creators the legal access to use their footage while gaining ad revenue. While it's true Sportsnet has laws and rules to respect, the NBA has shown us that there are ways for content creators and big corporations to not only coexist together, but also also flourish together on many different social media outlets. Personally, it is so frustrating to see something that I love so much to be so backwards. We wonder why there is such a big gap between the NHL and the NBA, topic for another day. But in my opinion, this complete failure to detect and capitalize on the opportunities seen only by its competitors is certainly a big part of the problem.